There are a number of stock analysts and people in the general public that think that Tesla is wildly overvalued. But if you pay attention to what Elon Musk has been saying and what Tesla is doing, you can see that they're actually wildly undervalued instead. And actually, they might be leading the way to AGI. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I wanna talk about a few recent posts from Elon Musk on X that I think all are sort of of a piece that reveal that people are really not looking at Tesla in the right way and they're really undervaluing Tesla and really undervaluing where Tesla is headed in the next few years by thinking about them as a traditional auto company rather than what they really are. And of course, I will start with this because Elon puts it right out here. You'll notice this is December 27th. This is about a week ago as I filmed this. I, I've been intending to do this video for quite a while, but a number of other videos ideas have come up, so I've had to put it off. But anyway, I've been wanting to do this for a while. So anyway, you can see here, Sawyer Merritt says, Roth Capital Analyst Craig Irwin on Tesla. I'm bearish because I see it as egregiously overvalued. When we look at Toyota as a benchmark, there's nothing Tesla has that Toyota does not. That is a refrain he uses all the time. Competition in China is overtaking them. It's going to be a tough 2024. He has an $85 price target, which is embarrassingly low, by the way. And of course, as always, I will leave a link to all of these posts in the description so you can you know, play back this video and, and you can hear what he has to say in person. Anyway, the important part here is Elon Musk responded to that by saying he has the wrong frame of reference. Tesla is an AI slash robotics company. And that's really what I wanna talk about today is how Tesla is not really a car company. They're more of an AI robotics and manufacturing company. They make hardware, but AI and robotics are really, really at you know, the center of what Elon Musk and I believe many, many people at Tesla are thinking about what Tesla is. And while I am not a stock analyst by any means, and you should definitely not take my advice on stock stuff because I'm not very good at investing. <laughs> anyway, I do want to bring this up because I think this is important. Holmar's catalog says, says, and it's still massively undervalued to Tesla being up 129.86% in the year of 2023. Elon says, I stand by my prediction that if Tesla executes extremely well over the next five years that the long-term value could exceed Apple and Aramco combined. And that's multiple trillions of dollars. Aramco, of course, being the Saudi Arabian oil company and Apple, of course, being Apple. So as of just a few days ago, Elon Musk is reiterating that Tesla could be valued more than these two companies combined. These two companies are in the top five of most valued companies in the world. So that's a pretty bold prediction on Elon's part. And he has been making it, I can't remember when he first made it, but well over a year that he started making this prediction. And, and he is standing by that prediction. And again, he's saying that they have to execute very, very well. But this tails into the idea of an auto manufacturer. You know, Toyota is never going to be worth more than Apple or Aramco, much less both of them combined, right? So the, it's just a traditional automaker is never going to be worth that much money. So you really have to think different to use an old Apple ad that Steve Jobs did. I think that's a great ad that he did. But anyway, you have to think different about Tesla to really understand where the true valuation could come in. I took French in high school and have always regretted not taking Spanish too, as I spend far more time in Spanish-speaking countries than I do in French-speaking ones. Well, with the new year, I am fixing that problem by using today's sponsor, Babbel, to teach me Latin American Spanish. Babbel is scientifically proven to help you start speaking a new language in three weeks, which is great for me as I like quick results. Plus, Babbel teaches you real-world conversational skills, something practical you can use with people in your life who speak the language or make you feel comfortable doing daily tasks in a country you're traveling in. And that comfort level can make all the difference as you have practical conversations about travel, business, relationship, food, and more. Aprendo Español. Aprendo Español. Puedes repetir? Puedes repetir? No entiendo. No entiendo. Be sure to check out my link in the description to get 60% off your subscription during their New Year's sale. But hurry, time is limited on this great deal. Babbel is a fantastic way to learn a new language with lessons designed by real language teachers. Plus with Babbel, you get two free live classes with your subscription and a 20 day money back guarantee. So you can try Babbel risk free and find out how easy it is to learn a new language. Be sure to check out my link to get 60% off any subscription, including a lifetime subscription during Babbel's big New Year's sale. Thanks again to Babbel for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back to it. 
And then a couple of more posts about full self-driving version 12, which doesn't really seem to have to do with what I was talking about at first, but it actually does. So anyway, first let's read those and then we'll talk about it. So anyway, Tesla Synopsis said, when can we have full self-driving version 12? You know, this was December 27th, so about a week ago again, highly anticipated. Elon responded, and this is pretty exciting in its own right. It is already on a lot of cars and specifically that would be employee vehicles, not any of us regular consumers. But given that it is a completely new architecture, we are doing extra tests. It works very well in California, but needs more training for heavy precipitation areas. So of course I had to reply to that, that since I live in Georgia, we get lots of precipitation here. So I volunteered my vehicle for testing full self-driving version 12. They have not <laughs> taken me up on that. But anyway, hopefully they are expanding out that testing regime and they're looking at these areas that have snow and rain and things like that. Because again, California doesn't have a lot of that, at least not down by the coast, they do up in the mountains. But hopefully we will start to see people at least in California start to get full self-driving version 12 relatively soon. And then finally, the post that really ties this all together. You can see Holmar's catalog said, computer mother something vision, baby. It's a family channel, man. You can read it on the screen. So anyway, he was responding to Corey Aronson showing a video of full self-driving version 12. I'm gonna turn the sound down and just play it a little bit. It is quite beautiful looking. I really, really can't wait to get this interface. And I mean, the interface is not the crucial part, but it is really beautiful. It looks like quite the upgrade. Anyway, Elon responded to that saying, it is increasingly clear that all roads lead to AGI. Tesla is building an extremely compute efficient mini AGI for FSD. Okay, so how does this all tie together? Well, clearly Elon is thinking that Tesla should be valued as an AI slash robotics company. I really like the analogy of Domino's Pizza. I heard several years ago, gosh, I mean, you know, it might be seven or eight years ago now, that Domino's is not a pizza company. They are an efficient manufacturing and delivery company. Company that just so happens to make pizzas. You know, that's the widget that they make. And so you should value a company like Domino's Pizza not based on their pizza. And I know their pizza isn't fantastic. So you could also argue that they don't make great pizza because they're not a pizza company. But anyway, the idea was that you should value them thinking about their supply chain, thinking about their logistics, thinking about their online ordering, thinking about their delivery. All of those things are what the person was arguing that Domino's should be valued as. And so in the case of Tesla, you're looking at them, most people seem on the face to go like they make vehicles and I've got two Teslas sitting in the garage right now. So people think about Tesla as a car company, but really if you listen to Elon and you listen to a lot of their lead engineers, including Franz von Holzhausen who designs the cars, but also like Lars Moravi who's their head engineer, and then Ashok Eloswamy who is the head of their full self-driving AI team, you know, they all think about Tesla as more of a manufacturing behemoth. Their specialty is making cars complex products, hardware products, and also making complex software products. I just yesterday had a talk with Lars from Best in Tesla. I'll put a link to that up here and at the end of this video. But we were talking about how complex software is. People often don't give software enough credence. They're like, oh, software is easy to make. It's really hard to make the hardware for your iPhone, but really easy to make the software. But that's not so true. <laughs> software is really, really hard. Me and my business partner for Artomatic, as soon as I finish this video, we're going to jump on a call and talk about some bizarre software problems we're having with our little company's new product that we're coming out with. And by the way, stay tuned for that because we will be doing a, a public, you know, soft launch of this sometime, hopefully within the month of January. So that will be very exciting. And I will announce that, of course, on this channel. So stay tuned to that. Subscribe, all of that kind of good stuff if you're if you haven't already. But anyway, we were talking about it because there's so many little bizarre problems that keep coming up and you have to like go down these rabbit holes and try to figure out what the software problem is and you know just trying to figure out what the issue is before you can even fix it can often be agonizingly difficult and that's even for small projects when you start talking about giant AI projects or giant manufacturing projects or simulation projects or anything like that it, it just gets absolutely insane trying to keep up with all of the different potential problems and interactions of different parts of software and stuff. So, you know, while manufacturing hardware is demonstrably more difficult because you're dealing with matter as opposed to electrons, software is not easy. And if you don't think that auto manufacturers around the globe are coming to grips with that right now, then uh, you're probably not paying attention because Jim Farley from Ford has specifically said that. We've heard Herbert Diess before, but now Oliver Bluma, the CEO of VW Group is saying like, we can't do it. You know, they hired, I think five 
5,000 people for their Karyad software division, and they have since disbanded most of that. That was just last year. I was at CES last year, and they, these guys were all at the gigantic booth. We talked for a long time. They kind of knew that things weren't going very well already, but they've pretty much given up on that, it appears, and moved almost all of their software development over to China. So all of this software development end of things is very complex, and of course, manufacturing at mass scales very, very efficiently is also incredibly complex. And if you haven't seen my Cybertruck factory, you know, kind of breakdown with Scott Walter, I will leave that up here as well, because that is absolutely amazing stuff. The kind of new technology and things that they had to invent to build the Cybertruck at scale is, is very, very impressive. So anyway, the long and short of this is that Tesla should be valued as something that is not a car company. What you want to call them, I'm not exactly sure, because I'm not exactly sure anything like Tesla has ever existed before. They are more or less a giant hardware and software manufacturing juggernaut. And of course, that response to Sawyer Merritt, where Elon said that Tesla is an AI slash robotics company, that is him saying we are software and specifically AI and, and machine learning and stuff like that. So more software 2.0 than software 1.0 and robotics, which means building objects like a car, which is a four-wheeled robot, and of course, Optimus, which is a humanoid robot. So it's the two things. It's the software and it's the hardware and it's the ability to manufacture both of these things at mass scale. Now, you know, software at mass scale is not that difficult because you just copy and paste it everywhere. But hardware at mass scale is really, really challenging. And so they're working on both ends of this, which means that if, as I suspect, AGI and especially artificially intelligent agency or AIA depends on embodiment. In other words, something being in a body rather than just inside of a computer. If artificial general intelligence and especially AIA or artificially intelligent agents need embodiment, then Tesla is in the pole position to do this because they're the only ones really, really working hard on both ends of this thing right now. And part of the amazing thing of what Tesla is doing is that they're building edge AI. It really seems like that's what they're working on. And that actually goes to the last post that I talked about from Elon, where he said that they're building extremely compute efficient mini AGI for FSD. So mini AGI is like edge computing. It's doing it inside your car or inside the Optimus robot, not on gigantic server clusters with thousands and thousands of NVIDIA H100s running to make something happen. They're trying to do this on a portable compute budget, basically. Right, So somewhere around 100 watts of power, more or less, to do this kind of thing, relatively small amounts of memory, relatively small CPUs, GPUs, neural network architecture, all of that kind of stuff. In other words, things that can fit on a portable computer, like laptop size, a little bit bigger than that. But more or less, that kind of a power budget and that kind of a memory budget and that kind of a compute budget. And that is something that, again, all these other companies, OpenAI, even XAI and stuff like that, and running their software on these gigantic clusters and everything, and that is something that Tesla is doing. They're running it on that to train all of these things because you have to have these massive compute clusters to train it. But then they're distilling down what they're doing into these forms where they can actually be run on edge computing. And that puts them again at a huge pole position. And if Elon is right, and if Tesla is right, and if I'm right, what we're looking at here is the, the kind of proliferation of AGI. So we're not going to be talking about these gigantic compute clusters as the only places where AGI exists. So currently, you know, for for example, if you get on your phone and you interact with ChatGPT, all you're doing on your phone is sending something over the internet to ChatGPT for it to interpret, do things with, and then it produces an answer and sends that back to you. And the place that all of the AI work is being done is in a gigantic server cluster. That's where it's happening. But what Elon is talking about here is actually doing this on your vehicle or in your personal robot when Optimus comes online. And that's a real game changer. That's why version 12 of their software and even version 11, the stuff that we're driving right now with full self-driving, it is massively different than what we're looking at from other companies that are doing all of this very advanced AI work. And that is that they're doing this on portable computers. They're doing it on a very small energy, memory, and compute bandwidth budget. And even if other robotics companies want to do this, who else has the ability to manufacture tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of these robots, either four-wheeled robots or two-legged robots, and put them out into the world? Nobody 
really does. So everybody else is in a situation where they're either good at software and they can manufacture software and that's great, but they don't have the hardware or they're good at manufacturing hardware, but they don't have the software. And so these companies are gonna have to marry up and you know kind of merge cultures and things like that. And that's going to take time. And all the while Tesla is going to be advancing and advancing and advancing and having the capability to scale the hardware and the software out at massive scale. And of course, collect the data that comes back from this massive scale. That's one of the huge advantages that the Tesla has right now in terms of full self-driving. Perhaps the most major advantage is that they have almost all of the data. They're collecting so much data from their fleet that they're able to train much, much faster than anybody else. And so while everybody else is trying to catch up in the world, Tesla is gonna keep leapfrogging and getting better and better. And this is exactly why Elon says that if they execute well, they could have a valuation that is more than Apple and Aramco combined, which of course would put them very much at the forefront of the most valuable company in the world. And you know what's really scary about that? That five-year window would just be the beginning. That would just be Tesla taking off. And if that makes you think about Chome from Dune, then yeah, you might be on the right track in the long term. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon, my YouTube channel members, and of course, my ex-subscribers. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel in any way that you can. And if you wanna join any of the teams, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Teslabot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, a huge thanks once again to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check my link in the description to get 60% off your subscription. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.